Today, we're going to begin by playing a game. It's often called Kim's Game, where you have to remember the things on the tray. So here we have our tray of objects. I'm going to give you a little while to look at them. Got a poppy, paper clip, castanets, Nerf gun, bullet, water gun, plaster, a band, sheep, some earphones. We're going to cover this up now and something is going to disappear. But what is it going to be? Okay, right. What's missing? Have a look. I wonder how many of you got it right. It was the Nerf gun bullet. Right, going again. Something is going to disappear. Something, but what will it be? What will it be? What's missing? Can you tell? I'm sure some of you are shouting it out right now. And it was the poppy. Okay, two more goes. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Okay, we're gonna take off that tea towel. Any ideas? It was the band, the amazing poppy bands. Fantastic, right, one more go, I think. One more go, what's it gonna be? Right, it's time to reveal. This one's quite tricky. But definitely something a lot of people might need. It's the plaster. Well done. Fantastic. Good playing. Sometimes we forget things like meetings or homework. And you know, the thing is, there are things that are really important to remember, like birthdays, our families and friends. Just think for a moment, what would it be like if everybody forgot your birthday? I know I would be very, very upset. So this week we've been thinking a lot about Remembrance Day. And on Remembrance Day, we're remembering things. Another time when it's really important to remember is when you've been given a present and you want to write and say thank you for it. And often, people think of Remembrance Day as a time when we're saying thank you for a very special present. A present of freedom to live in our beautiful country with laws that keep us safe and well and where everybody is allowed to talk about things and what they want to believe in without being afraid. So it's a very brilliant present that we are saying thank you for on Remembrance Day. Now, sometimes we learn about wars and it just seems like it happened such a long time ago. We just, it seems completely strange to us. Or it's happening so far away that we just don't really understand what it's got to do with us. Well, I've asked a few people this morning to share their stories of why Remembrance Day is important to them. And they're really cool to hear how people even today have got links to the wars that happened a long time ago as well as the wars that are happening around the world today. Remembrance Sunday actually is a very important time of the year because it's a time where we all stop and reflect at the sacrifices that so many tens of thousands of people made so that we live in freedom and uh, though it seems a long time ago, the tyranny that actually we had to fight against during the Second World War and to a lesser extent during the First World War has changed our lives and changed our destiny. 
Now, for me personally, my grandfather actually was in the First World War. He fought in the Battle of the Somme. He was in an Irish cavalry regiment. Now, he was very fortunate and he survived, obviously. And then my father, in fact, was uh, a pilot in the Royal Air Force and he was involved in the conflict, uh, the war in the Falklands. And he had the very uh, sad job of bringing back many of the wounded from uh, uh, Uruguay who came back from this uh, Galahad which was hit by a missile and many of them very badly burnt. So Remembrance Sunday is a very personal thing for our family because of our association with the military but it's a time for all of us to show our appreciation and remember those who sacrificed so much so that we could live in freedom. So that's why Remembrance Sunday is really important. And that's why we should stop, give thanks, reflect and solemnly think about those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. Remembrance for me is a combination of remembering and thanksgiving. During the Second World War, we lived on the south coast, and before D-Day, thousands of troops assembled there with their vehicles. Many were parked in our road, and the soldiers became friends. When they went off to D-Day, we knew that many of them would not return. Since then, there have been other wars and I've always been conscious of the sacrifice made by in war. And I'm thankful for all the benefits that we enjoy thanks to those sacrifices. Hi guys. Well, what does remembrance mean to me? Well, remembrance, of course, means remembering, uh, remembering and being thankful for the brave men and women who were willing to fight in battles and wars and ultimately many of them willing to give their lives and did give their lives in uh, the world wars that we've seen and other wars since then. My grandfather fought in World War II and as a result he spent many many years away from my grandma and so there was that sense of sacrifice that actually he couldn't be with her and so many men and women have had to do exactly those kind of things but to defend uh, the peace of this country. But it's also the other things that we maybe we take for granted, the things that I take for granted, I know I do, things like having a decent night's sleep or being able to have a nice meal or being able to uh, not be cold, being warm and cosy. Those kind of things uh, just couldn't happen all the time for those soldiers in those situations. And so there were so many sacrifices made and of course ultimately uh, there were sacrifices made which involved uh, soldiers dying. And uh, that is an incredible thing that they were willing to put their lives at risk and willing to die so that we can uh, enjoy peace and enjoy the country that we now have. So remembrance is really special to me. And when I think about remembrance, I often think about my grandfather and the, his part in the war, Second World War. Remembrance Day is a time each year when you see people wearing poppies. And this is a visible reminder to me of the need to remember the millions of people who died during the two world wars as well as those that have died in the conflict since, in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. I believe it is really important to remember these people because we belong to a generation who have benefited from the sacrifice of these men and women. The world could have been a very different place for us without their sacrifice. There would have been no peace, no prosperity, and no freedom that we enjoy. I was very re until very recently in the army and was involved myself in some of the more recent conflicts that have taken place over the last 30 years. Due to this, remembrance means a lot more to me. I now stop and remember friends and people that I know died in these conflicts. 
However, it is not just the, those that have been killed that I remember. It is equally important to remember those that have been hurt, both physically and mentally, and the family and friends of those that have died and the need to support them. Now there's one story in the Bible in particular where Jesus helps a soldier and I thought I'd share that with you today as it's on our theme. There was a Roman centurion. That means he was in charge of a lot of people and although he wasn't a Jew like Jesus and his friends, they knew that he really cared about God's people and he was very helpful in, to them. He'd helped build a synagogue even. He was somebody who loved God massively. Well, this centurion, one day, his servant became really ill at home. And the centurion was clearly somebody, the soldier who cared for all people, no matter how rich or poor, or whether they were important, or just a servant. And he went to Jesus and he asked for him to heal his servant. Did Jesus say no because the Romans were enemies? No, he didn't. In fact, he praised the man's faith. And he said it was amazing that he hadn't met anyone else like him who was so strong in faith. Because the centurion had said to Jesus, don't bother coming to my home. I'm not worthy to have you come. Just say the word and my servant will be well because he was a man who gave orders and things happened. And he could see that Jesus was a man with authority who would say, be well, and the servant would be healed. Well, amazingly, the servant was healed. Indeed, just by a word of Jesus when he wasn't even near him. But the beautiful thing of this story is just showing us how Jesus loved that soldier. He praised him and he was for him. And we need to love and be there for our soldiers who work so hard to keep people safe and well across our world today. Right. I've got some pictures now which we can look at and think about people who have been affected by war. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts to remember the impact of conflict in our world, to pray, mourn and seek God, to pray for those who have lost loved ones. To pray for those who can't forget what they've seen. Pray for those impacted by wars today. Pray for our armed forces and government. Pray for all who mourn. Pray for an end to division and hatred.
pray for peace. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted. Jesus called his followers to be peacemakers, to love their enemies and to forgive. None of these things are easy and none of these things Jesus expected us to do on our own. But he said that he wanted to give us his love, his forgiveness, his strength to do these very difficult tasks. And the good news is, that across the world today there are amazing stories of people who have chosen to love enemies, to forgive and to be there for people who are in big trouble. And so we just thank God for them all today as well as remembering the people who have died in the past or who are fighting today to bring goodness and truth across our world. We thank God for them all. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God can't.